Hello, and welcome to a very beautiful Wayford Bridge of an evening. Um, if you've seen a boat review by me before, and there are two out there, uh, this is one is going to be a bit different. I now have a five-year-old who wants to be in every single shot. So um, I'm hoping that we're going to edit this all together and it will become one cohesive boat review, and I hope it will be useful to you. Um, but I don't know what's going to happen. So we're going to go now from here at Wayford Bridge to past me, moored up, no, mud weighted up on Malthouse Broad. Hello and welcome to Malthouse Broad. Uh, we're mud weighted just off the moorings at Ramworth and uh, you join me for this boat view of Spring Horizon 2. And uh, we're out here at the front of the boat in the regular bathtub kind of, they are swing around there, bathtub well deck thing, which obviously is great for uh, sitting here when the weather's nice, it's a bit chilly today, and uh, you can feed the ducks, um, and pretty safe space. I mean, there's a great big distance there um, for my five-year-old, as long as he's only got his knees on the seat, I'm fairly happy. Um, so all nice and safe. Um, so let's go that way and go into the boat, which is access to the front here through this door. And we start off by finding the helm just there. And I'll swing the camera around and we can have a closer look at it. The helm position here provides really good all round visibility. Well, at least the front half of the boat. It's your sort of standard bathtub affair in terms of if you want to look backwards, there's not an awful lot to see other than a, a wife who's hiding. You can just see out that little door at the back just there. Um, but in all honesty, uh, reversing is not that easy in a bathtub uh, in terms of helm control all the fairly normal things um, various oil pressure gauges uh, that one there is important to keep an eye on when the engine's running to see what the bolts are doing and then the rev counter to base your speed on uh, and it's a fairly old clunky sort of engine so uh, down here we have the traditional pull handle to stop and the engine the horn. and there is the horn thank you very much and uh it's switch on once switch on twice to start heating the engine count to 10 and then the engine will start so that's the helm so while that's the main controls we've also got obviously the uh morse control throttle there uh and in terms of trying to see backwards you can open the sliding window but the boat's got a bit of a curve to it so you have to lean out a fair way all the way to there to be able to see backwards. Um, which is an interesting design choice. So the helm position here has been uh, more than comfortable to sit at. Uh, we've got our traditional stall for our little short legs, but also plenty of space to stretch out as well. Uh, radio just next to the helm position. And because this boat is from Richardson's Boatyard, uh, we get the free Wi-Fi provided by EE, so it's not proper Wi-Fi. Um, and this switch here is pull out for heat, uh, but there's no control, it's either on or off. And if we swing round, got a nice big saloon, three-seater sofa. Here in the edit, I realized I didn't point out that the sofa does not convert into a double bed, which they usually do. So this boat only sleeps three in two cabins. I find that just a bit strange, but there you go. It's been perfect for us. Uh, we've got the sort of half table up at the moment. Plenty of room for uh, small children to jump up and down on. The table can be bigger. The table can be bigger, that's right. Uh, plenty of space to put toys. There's the TV that we don't use. Um, I guess the thing I find slightly odd is that the two speakers for the radio are here and here, going fore and aft in the boat, rather than one either side at the front. Um, the other slight niggle, I suppose, is the fact that the um, cigarette lighter 12 volt power point is over there. I'm used to it being somewhere near the helm, so when I've got my phone on to check the speed through the GPS, it's all on charge, but I've had to run a fairly long cable under the mat. So, I mean, I've made it work, it's worked for me, but uh, it's been a bit tricky. Um, quite nice is the big sliding over roof uh, if you've hired a bathtub kind of boat before or something with a great big fiberglass roof like this you've probably had the same struggle as me now i'm currently suffering from long covid i don't have the full muscle strength and i thought well i'm not going to open this sunroof at all on the holidays um, however this one i can open with one hand look at that easy peasy we have failed if you push it right the way back it can get stuck and so then i have to call for my wife's help to close it again um, so that's kind of the end of this section here. That's a good spin round the saloon area. 
and down here we can see the long galley. Um, but before I start filming down there, I'm going to get us underway. And um, the reason for that is I want you to get the full atmosphere of what the galley is like when you're moving. Because this box here is the engine. The galley is the usual bathtub affair of being a galley style kitchen all the way down the side. Um, down here, we've got perfectly serviceable sliding doors. Now, compared to photos online, they've obviously done a bit of a refresh. I wouldn't call it a refit. They've just done a bit of a refresh because um, I suspect this is all still the 1970s actual kitchen. But it's, I mean, you know, it all looks very smart and neat and up to date. Um, usual kind of sink. Now, if you struggle to hear me at any point, it's because the engine's now running. Now, we're only doing four miles an hour because we're going up the Ramworth Dam. But when we went down the Bure earlier in the week uh, and we got up to six miles an hour, it was really loud. Almost ear defender loud, even in the saloon. Um, and I kind of feel that, you know, it's completely open. Just a door here would really help with that. Because you can notice it, even just one of us stands there, you can hear it. On this side, um, we've got like a, a spice rack cabinet thing with some glasses and mugs. We've got our medicine in there. Um, my e-bike's on there because that being the engine, you don't want anything on there at all because it will just get hot. So chocolate's going to melt instantly. Um, but it was a perfect place for my e-bike. fits perfectly. Um, keep coming down past the sink. Um, filter water, uh, hot water after 45 minutes of running the engine. Um, the fridge. Now we've had some entertaining times with the fridge in that when we first got here, uh, it was set to ice mode. So we uh, got some frozen ham and frozen drinks, um, but it's now settled itself down, but the ice box part isn't freezing. So I guess you can either have a bit of a freezer or a fridge you can choose. Um, here's a, a nice uh, clean uh, oven. And honestly, when we got it, it's very early in the season, but it looked brand new. It might be brand new. But certainly, if it had been used, it was incredibly well cleaned. And we've always had that with Richardson's. They take care of things really, really well. Um, just finish our sort of a, a lap here in the kitchen. Um, got the gas cut off valve. Switch the fridge, which you leave on the whole time until you leave. Fire blanket there. Carbon monoxide uh, alarm. and up there at the front, and we know this works because we tried it out with hot cross buns earlier, that is the fire alarm, smoke alarm. Um, so that's the galley here. Simple, but works. Uh, came with the crockery we needed. Um, didn't have washing up liquid or sort of a spongy scoury thing, um, which I thought it came with, but hey ho. Um, and then behind me then, we see the doors to the cabins and the rear of the boat which we'll do next. So, next to the pegs there at the back of the galley, we've got the door to the master cabin, which we'll just go into. And I'll close the door to try and keep out some of the engine noise. Although, again, you really couldn't try and sleep in here whilst that's going. Although, my wife did manage it. She's feeling a bit poorly. Um, so we've got six, one, two, three, four, five, and two behind me that you can't quite see. Six pretty deep drawers. They go right back under the gunnel. Uh, we've also got this space here, which we've used for keeping uh, like uh, folding scooters on, uh, which has been very handy. Uh, on the other side, um, we've got this sort of double wardrobe kind of thing where it's not like a home where everything's side on, it's, it's facing you. Um, and it, big hanging space, so I mean, you can hang your ball gowns. Um, I think I'd have probably wanted a, a shelf or something to be more useful. And then you come back here to the bed. Um, now, the bed goes under the gunnel. The bed is perfectly comfortable, space for two. It meets the uh, double pillow industry standard test. Um, again, the thing I feel that I would want is just like a little shelf, not to bang your head on, but just somewhere to put my watch overnight. Because when, when you're in there, you're surrounded on all sides by wall. Um, and remember that light, that will come up a bit later on in the video. Um, if we go back out of the master suite, oh, I forgot to point out, mirror there, um, another light here. Again, remember the lights, will come to that. Uh, back out, ready for the noise. We're sort of the back part of the boat, um, with the back door. Uh, on this side we have the uh, head, and I'll show you that in a second. And on that side, with just a curtain separating it, a single bunk. And I might wait till we get to Howe Hill uh, to film that when the engine's not running. Well, we're actually up at uh, Wayford Bridge. Uh, 
that's the door to the um, master suite, master cabin. Uh, and so now we'll have a look around the back of the boat as we come into here. This is just a single berth just for one person. Uh, they do get two windows though, which I think is very cool. Um, and a big wardrobe there. Plenty of space in the wardrobe for various different things you want to keep. Um, and small children, should you need to lock them away. Uh, right by the back door there. Um, and then into quite a big head slash bathroom, if you prefer that. Um, toilet is a fairly standard river cruiser toilet. Uh, push the pedal down to flush it jobby. Um, plenty of space in the sink. Uh, the shower was really quite impressive, um, just because of the amount of space you have. Um, if you manage to keep the curtain, the shower curtain, inside that lip, it's all very good. Again, it's got the usual sort of pump to pump out, there it is, down there. I don't get that switch, because you've got the switch Down there, um, which is a bit of a strange place to put it, because it's not exactly obvious. Um, however, if you're trying to shower, say, a five-year-old, um, or, 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 you know, some other sort of vicious animal, um, then the shower curtain probably isn't going to work. And then the sort of plan here with the dam keeping the water over there doesn't work, and there's no drain out there, so that becomes a little bit more of an issue. Um, and so that's kind of the, the general layout. And then out the back Don't here... Don't that! Oh, yeah, no, sorry. I'm being told not to forget the switch there to pump in the river water to help flush the toilet uh, so here's the back door and we'll take a little look out there and see what it's like on the rear deck the uh, rear deck out here um, it's not huge there's sort of you know there's there's a little step slash seat thing you could sit on a little flash uh, steep uh, thing there uh, in there are your rondankers uh, mallet uh, no that's a lie that's the gas canisters sorry this side down here that's the rondankers and the mallets, and also the oil, because I haven't mentioned the engine. Um, in fact, I think there's probably several things I haven't mentioned, so um, we'll come to that in a second. Uh, basically, it's quite a small little well deck at the back here, but again, because the engine's not out here, it can be a very peaceful place just to sit while you're cruising along and just watch the world go by. So, um, I've done my best with this boat review. Uh, uh, I'm going to now put in a few quick shortcuts of things that I know I've missed, of things that I think I should point out, and then I'll try and finish with one solid walkthrough of the boat, undisturbed by anyone. As mentioned before, under here is the engine, which I'm gonna lift up and reveal. Now I'm assuming this engine goes back to the prehistoric ages, but look how amazingly clean it is. That is just remarkable. Uh, there's a little pin to hold it up. Ooh, sorry about that. And the only check I've had to do on the boat is check the oil, and it's so easily reachable, it's just there. Um, so, noisy during the day, but really easy to check. Fairly standard on any sort of boat, really. Uh, the double bed, you can only get on one side, but it's a little bit more tricky on this boat because you've only got this gap here to get into. So getting in and out over a partner in the middle of the night is quite tricky. Another handy drawer underneath the bed in the single cabin and there is a little side table but oddly no little cupboard there which feels like there should be these windows happens quite a lot on the bathtubs they do shake with the engine and uh, have opened a couple of times on us as we've been going along if it were really cold that might be more of an issue this window which is near the stove is bolted permanently open which i can't remember seeing on a boat before but maybe i've just missed them uh, which i imagine might make it a bit breezy if it was really cold but we didn't have any problems with it so fair enough just here behind the helm is the switch for the water pump, but also it says 240 AC power, which surprised the guy at the yard as much as me because this boat doesn't have 240 volts, but it sort of does because here next to the TV, there is a plug socket, but there is also a sign that says only for TV use. So we haven't used that at all. Here's an electric windscreen wiper. Boop. Bit funny where it parks though. Here in the head was the first time I noticed that uh, the boat has new LED lights. Although, a bit of a strange um, wiring choice there. I've tried to tuck it back up a couple of times, but it's not going. Um, and I thought, oh, split this refresh. They've, they've done quite a nice job. However, old light, old light, completely different light, old light, old light, new light. And same here bit of dangly wiring. 
Then you have a couple of bulk headlights like this, which I don't know if it's going to work. Nope. There seems to be a switch problem, not quite working. And the one above the bed, this again, that's switched on. You poke it around a bit and it will come on. So I would say that one is in need of replacement. Back at Wayford Bridge, and this is Spring Horizon 2 from the outside. Uh, she's a Horizon 35, um, launched in 1978. So that explains some of the wear and tear. Um, 35 foot long, 12 foot wide, displaces six tons. I love broads.org.uk, what a great website. Um, and now uh, at Richardson's Boatyard, which you can see there. That's kind of the only marking on Richardson's boats now. There's nothing on the side, um, which I still find a bit weird. Uh, we'll walk down the side here, plenty of fenders. Uh, here we've got the diesel, which you shouldn't need to use, but they point it out because if I just come down nice and low, that's quite a trip hazard on the deck there. So just be careful of that one. Uh, and as we come to the back, we have obviously the uh, nice big well deck at the front, and there's like a, a little whirl at the back. What I would say is both the rear access and the access at the front uh, are quite big steps. So although she is a single level cruiser, which is great for people and uh, with mobility issues or young children, um, getting on and off the boat might be an issue for you. And our five-year-old has needed a hand to get on and off. Um, on the top, she does have that sunroof I mentioned earlier. Um, that's about it, really. That's Spring Horizon 2. So here is one funnel walk through the whole of Spring Horizon 2. We're now back at Richardson's Boatyard in Stalham. And hopefully this will, in one take, give you an idea of just what the boat is like. As long as I don't drop my phone in the drink. Into the back door, head on that side, shower, single berth. Oh, this was one other strange thing. Um, this berth only has, which side is it? Uh, a curtain it doesn't have a door um, and it's very close to the toilet which is not necessarily a problem but in the night if you need the loo trying to move that sliding door can be a little bit tricky anyways back to here in there was the master cabin and that's the galley There's the main saloon. TV, helm, sunroof above. And that takes us out to the forward well deck. In the edit, I realized I haven't actually summarized our experience. So here's some background footage of the upper reaches of the River Bure, just above Beela. Um, this boat has been brilliant for us. We've had a really pleasant short break. Um, yes, it's a bathtub and that has its own pros and cons. It gets under all the bridges, other than Potter Hyam, but it can be a bit tricky to stern more. It's been very, very comfortable. And let's not forget, this is one of the absolute cheapest hire boats on the broads. And it's had everything we needed for a really wonderful holiday. So I have absolutely no problems recommending this boat. And... If I wanted to have another short break, keeping to the upper reaches of the Bure or the Ant or the Thern, um, I'd absolutely hire this boat again. I wouldn't want it to go perhaps much further south than Akel, because you do have the forest of reeds there to get you down to the south, southern broads, and you do want to go at six miles an hour there um, to get back to the more interesting parts. And she's very, very loud above four miles an hour. So that's the downside. Great for short breaks. Probably not for a longer break, but I would definitely hire this boat again. So I hope this has been a useful review of Spring Horizon 2 from Richardson's Cruises. Um, and if it wasn't, I'm sorry I wasted your time.